Right, so genomic testing in CLL is actually very important. So there are several genomic tests you can do, but I think there are certain important ones and crucial ones. So I think the most important one, which is well established, is what is called the CLL fish testing, which was came about actually almost 20 years ago in a paper in New England Journal, where in the era of chemotherapy, they said that there are different genomic subgroups, such as deletion 17P, which was the worst subgroup in terms of the long-term outcomes. Now we're in the era of new therapies. We have Ibrutinib, we have Acalabrutinib, we have Venetoclax, we have PL3 kinase inhibitors. And in the new era, it appears that the deletion 17P as a genomic subgroup is still one of the highest risk subgroup. And the patients do respond to, um, 17P patients do respond to these new therapies, but they then to have a slightly higher progression rate. And that's especially too when you're using a time-limited therapy of Venetoclax plus or Venetuzumab. Similarly, checking for mutation status for IGHV is very important, especially in the context of time-limited therapy. If you use venetoclax plus or venetuzumab, if you stop therapy at one year, patients who are unmutated for V gene, they have a higher rate of relapse, even if they achieve MRD negative remission. And the other important one will be, which goes with deletion 17P, will be TP53 mutation. So many investigators or many clinicians check for CLL fish panel and they look for deletion 17P but it's important to recognize that several of the patients may not have deletion 17P on the fish, but have TP53 on the mutation analysis. And that has a similar um, meaning in terms of poor response to chemotherapy and a high-risk disease. So it's important to really check both the mutation for P53 as well as fish for deletion 17P. In my mind, from a practical decision maker, decision making for treatment, these are the three important tests. There are other things, complex karyotype, which can, is important, um, ZAP17, CD38, beta-2 microglobulin, but some of them are less really important in terms of treatment decision making, and many of them have actually lost prognostic significance with the era of new therapies. They were important when doing chemotherapy, but now that we're targeting therapies, uh, some of these are less relevant right now.